Donnie and Dolly. The team is supported by ableauctions.ca. Closing your business, we can help. It is Wednesday, and all of our guests today are brought to you by our title sponsor, Able Auctions, ableauctions.ca. Vegas Golden Knights over the Florida Panthers 9-3. Vegas wins the Stanley Cup final in five. They are Stanley Cup uh, champions, NHL champions in year six. Here to talk about that and more from Sakaris and Price, the Rinkwide podcast, and the hockey news, former Bell employee Jeff Patterson. How are you, Jeff? Well, look, I've learned an awful lot. I know that uh, it's a compressed show here, but right off the top, Donnie, uh, I'll cop to the fact that I took a pay cut at the end at 1040. You didn't, and I think that's the reason now I understand why the station went under. <laughs> I'm with I wasn't you on the that. only one. I'm yeah. with you on that. They never asked. How about that? How about uh, that? Any question, Jeff, that the Vegas Golden Knights are the best team in the NHL? Well, the Boston Bruins <laughs> might want to make an argument about the regular season, but uh, regular season doesn't matter. It's yeah. uh, about who gets the cup at the end, and there was no doubt that uh, the Golden Knights were the better team in the Stanley Cup final. Obviously, we learned of some key injuries to the Florida Panthers after the fact, but uh, boy, what a punctuation mark on the franchise's first ever Stanley Cup victory last night, uh, just pumping goal after goal uh, past Sergei Bobrovsky. Mm-hmm. So, uh, I, look, I know that there is a lot of hatred out there for the way that this is all shaken down in the last six years to get from expansion to this point, but... Uh, I admire the Golden Knights and the way that they, like, right from day one, Bill Foley, he said they were going to do things yeah. differently. George McPhee talked about that last night on the ice, that they didn't want to do things the way that teams had done in the past when it came to building out an expansion franchise. And the fact that these guys are as ruthless as they have been over a short span to get to the top of the podium. Like, you know, they didn't fall in love with players. When they had an opportunity to go out and get a better player or a replacement that they thought would help uh, improve their hockey club, they jumped at it. They went through two really good head coaches in Gerard Gallant and Pete DeBoer, but Bruce Cassidy clearly was the right guy for the job, and he's got a Stanley Cup now. And you look at, you know, Nate Schmidt. Everybody loved Nate Schmidt. I think Vegas loved Nate Schmidt, but they saw an opportunity to get Alex Petrangelo, and so Nate Schmidt was collateral damage. They brought Max Pacioretty in. He was good for them. But they needed salary cap space. Mark Andre Fleury became the face of that franchise in the early going and was incredible in that first season. But again, they needed cap space, and so the flower became a casualty. Look at Alex Tuck. Alex Tuck. I mean, yeah. Alex Tuck is exactly what every team in the league should want: big, strong, fast, powerful offense. But they saw an opportunity to get Jack Eichel, and so they were willing to move off a guy like Alex Tuck along with first round picks and, and those types of things. So. Uh, they've got about it differently, and you guys talked about it. I mean, it's Vegas. They gamble, but uh, most of their gambles uh, have paid off for them, and as a result, they are the Stanley Cup champs. Six seasons for Vegas, uh, 52 seasons, 53 years for the Vancouver Canucks, and zero uh, Stanley Cups. Not not one. Should that bother Vancouver fans, Jeff? Uh, it should bother Canuck fans every year, Donnie, when the Stanley Cup is presented and the Canucks don't get their hands on it. And, you know, obviously the three years they got to the final and came up short, two of them in Game 7. Today's the, what, 29th anniversary, I suppose it is, of uh, 1994. Time marches on uh, in a big oh, way. But obviously the Canucks have gotten, you know, that close twice in their history, but uh, they still are, are left wanting. So, yeah, Canuck fans should be frustrated every year, not just because Vegas – you know, the biggest advantage for Vegas was starting from scratch with no bad contracts on the book. But at the same time, they had to build a franchise. And I know people look at the expansion rules. Like they were picking the eighth best forward in most cases off a lot of these teams. And, you know, they did a nice job of creating that identity around the misfits and the ones that still exist. I mean, that storyline is still there in Vegas. But I, I have trouble with this idea that they were handed a Stanley Cup because... They've had roster churn, they've had coach churn, and they've just kind of kept their eyes on the prize and gone about business, as I said, ruthlessly and aggressively. And in the end, I mean, they played the short game. They weren't in it for the long haul, you know, to pedal. Cody Glass, remember all the talk, or Elias yeah. Pedersen or Cody Glass? You know, Canucks got Pedersen, they're happy with that. Vegas oh, had Cody yeah. Glass, he's gone. Yeah. Peyton Krebs is out of there. Uh, Eric Brandstrom, you know, to go and to get Pedrangelo and Mark Stone uh, and... Eichel and others again like they just you know shot for the stars and ultimately they were able to land them and they built a hockey team that uh, turned out to be better than any other this season 
Jeff, we're getting word that Ethan Bear is now going to have surgery, and it looks like he's going to be out until October, November. I mean, what does that do to, to, to the right side? What is it? I mean, what do they do? How, to, how do they compensate for his loss? He's, he's not going to be there for the start of the season. Yeah, what does it do for a contract? I'd have to think that he's just going to accept his qualifying offer because he won't have any leverage whatsoever, and I don't think you want to lock him in if he's coming off shoulder surgery. So uh, maybe they get a little bit of a break in terms of uh, the dollar figure there. But the bigger question, Rick, is you're right. Like, I think everybody had penciled Ethan Bear in on the right side. Is he a perfect player? No, but he certainly showed that he could partner with Quinn Hughes, and you know he could be a part of the top four that they've got here uh, now. Uh, you know, and, and I wonder if this forces them at this late stage to double back and open some discussions with a guy like Kyle Burroughs or Noah Juleson. Or, you know, if you're Jet Wu and you hear this news, uh, you know, Cole McWard's on the right side, Philip Johansson, a right side guy under contract as well. Like, are they prepared just to promote from within and hope that one of those young guys is ready to be an everyday player? Like, I know Ryan Johnson's on the record thinking that Jet Wu is going to play some NHL games, but I don't think Ryan Johnson expected him to break training camp as, you know, one of the six defensemen on opening night. So uh, there's definitely a bridge to gap there or gap to bridge, and uh, we'll see what happens. But uh, it's incredible because, uh, you know, when I, and I know we've talked about this before, like Ethan Bear came back from the Worlds. He didn't play the semifinal or the final, but you know, he was out there celebrating the gold medal with his teammates. He was in Kamloops dropping the ceremonial puck, and there was no <laughs> visible sign of damage. But uh, obviously, there were uh, things that needed some repair in that shoulder of his. So that's a blow for him. But yeah, I mean, absolutely. Just uh, adds another layer of complexity to what the Canucks are going to have to do here uh, in this offseason with very little money to spend. Jeff, when I look at the uh, Panthers' uh, injured list... You know, my goodness, Matthew Kachuk, uh, broken sternum, Aaron Ekblad, broken foot, two separated shoulders, uh, Gudis, high ankle sprain, Bennett was hurt in the Toronto series. Again, to win this trophy, it is no doubt in my mind, it's the hardest trophy in the world to win. Yeah, it's remarkable that doctors will allow these guys to go and play, though. Like, I, I get the hockey player and we admire the toughness and the will to win, but uh, I don't know. I mean, a crack store in them, that sounds like pretty serious stuff to me. And yet you knew that it was going to basically uh, take amputation for Matthew Kajuk to, to miss games. So, um, yeah, incredible for a guy like Aaron Ackbled to to be able to play every single night with that litany of uh, injuries that you ran through. I, I do wonder, though, ultimately, you know, any of those guys, pick any of them, you know, at 50 or 60 percent, like, are they better than their replacement? Mm. And I guess the Florida Panthers felt that they were. And so they kept trotting them out there. And look, the Panthers were an incredible story. It was fun to watch, but they were the second best team in the Stanley Cup final. So even with a healthy Matthew Kachuk and if Ekblad had been at 100 percent and on and on it goes, uh, I still think Vegas was going to win that series. I predicted Vegas in five. Uh, and ultimately, that's how it played out. And so, uh, you know, hats off to the Florida Panthers. They made it fun. Everybody loves upsets. But uh, in the end, I, I do think that the, the right team, the best team in the Stanley Cup final came out victorious. I loved how you slipped that prediction in there, Jeff. The fact that you predicted it correctly. <laughs> Knights in five. Outstanding. Hey, uh, because or, you know that, like, I know. I, I, I mean, 99% of people's predictions don't come course, true. And we yeah. never... You know, and we never go back and revisit them. But when you get one right in the season, of course, you're going to bang the drum there. You know what I'm going to do right now? I'm going to call Mr. Check and ask uh, for a pay cut just yeah. to keep you yeah, happy. Just to keep okay, you Jeff? Happy. Well, I thought you were going to say ask for me to take one. <laughs> no, you, you've been yeah. down that road before. I have. Yeah. My turn. Yeah, we and like have. everybody else, there's thoughts with uh, yeah. so many good people in Edmonton have been on those shows yep. uh, an awful lot over the years like you guys have. And it sucks. It can be a yep. messy business. There's no doubt about it. We're a little behind, so we'll let you go, uh, Jeff. Thanks so much for this. We'll talk to you next Wednesday. All right, guys. Thanks. You bet.